Good evening and welcome to uh, Scrolling Wood Russ here over on Twitch. And I can hear myself yeah, uh, in the background with Al had his uh, volume up. But anyway, um, sorry I missed last week. I uh, went to my son-in-law's grandfather passed away and we went to his funeral. Uh, very, very wonderful, nice man. Um, he was al almost made it to 90 years old. He's a Vietnam veteran. Um, was in the army and uh, just a heck of a nice guy. I've known him. Well, Ashley and Justin have been married for uh, dang 12, 14 years, something like that. And uh, so I've known him all those all these years, 12 or 14 years. He used to work at Walmart and was a Walmart greeter for a long time. And I used to enjoy going to the Walmart and sitting and then seeing him and talking to him. So, uh, just a wonderful, uh, God-loving, church-going old man. But he, uh, he finally uh, passed away. And oh, and him and his wife had been married for 68 years. Can you believe that? 68 years. That's just just blows my mind away to think about 68 years. Wow, that's a long time. But anyway, we're going to start the uh, project of the squirrel tonight, the Intarja squirrel. So I've tried to get a few things ready for y'all, uh, even though I've been kind of busy. For, but first, before we go any further, let me talk about my wonderful sponsors. And they are Devobal Technologies for web design, development, hosting. Visit devobal.com. FastCap, innovative products for the professional woodworker. Go to fastcap.com. Rockler, 60 years in woodworking. Create with confidence. Visit rockler.com. Bearwood Supply Company, your best choice for hard find woodworking supplies. Go to bearwood.com. Uh, Klingspor, the sanding specialist. Woodworkingshop.com. And Seiko, the scroll saw specialist. Seiko.com. And uh, I'm sitting here right it with my uh, Seiko scroll saw. I'm on it. I just made this uh, tabletop for being able to do projects on. But those are my sponsors. And then, we, yes, we're going to be doing the uh, squirrel. So um, that's what we're going to be talking about tonight. Um, I've printed a bu up a bunch of patterns. This is, the, uh, this is the base pattern that I'm going to be using that I'm going to put on uh, a table where I assemble all my pieces. Is going to be, well, it would be better if I put it back over here. It's going to be this one, the base pattern. So, and I went, went ahead and printed a picture of him to kind of give me an idea. So I'd have it there of the uh, different colors of woods. So you don't have to print, 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 I'll get it out sooner or later. You don't have to print a uh, picture, but it helps, helps me to look at it to see, you know, the different colors of woods. I believe I'm going to use for the, um, if I can get stuff over here without throwing everything off. Uh, for these areas that are really light right here, I'm going to probably use maple. Uh, I have some ebony. I believe I can find the ebony that was given to me. And I'll use it for the eye and probably the little end of the acorn. Uh, or something dark like that. Definitely for this brown area at the bottom and then it runs up through his tail that's going to be walnut and then I didn't want anything quite as red so uh, I looked through and I'll show you it to you in just a minute I sent um, uh, Ken Moon gave me some red oak um, at the woodworking show last year remember we talked about the over on let's talk shop with Russ how he gave me a big long piece and we had to cut it and so I could get it in my wife's Camaro to get it home so anyway but yeah I printed that picture off to show that and then um, this is going to be my base pattern here and then I just print it off you pro you need about one pattern for every color of wood that you're going to use so if we go back to this picture we count the walnuts one two the maples three um, the ebony is four so one, two, three, four. There's a little white dot 
his eye. I doubt I'm going to, as small as that is, I doubt I'm going to do anything with it other than paint a piece, I put a white piece, a speck of paint on there for his eyeball and that. So, so you would need, need at least one, two, three, four patterns. Okay. And why that is, is because you're going to cut, let's get rid of this top piece and I'll show you the ones I printed. Now, just to save ink, I went in to the PDF and just eliminated. That's the same pattern as this one here. All I did was eliminate all the writing and the little squirrel picture up here just so that I didn't waste so much ink when I printed these. You can go into the PDF and edit it. And uh, that's what I did. So I printed, I don't remember how many of these I've got. I've got five or six. So I've got plenty of them here. So now let's go and I'll what we're going to do tonight is try to get these pieces cut as far as uh, out of the pattern. I don't know if I'm going to be able to glue them on here tonight. If I, uh, I, I might be able to. We'll just wait and see uh, how it goes for the night. And uh, um, but cut them all on the put them on the board. What'd you say, Al? Yeah, the grain direction is on the pattern. Okay, and right, the arrow, the arrows are on the pattern or for the grain direction. Now, uh, some of the patterns that they come out with here. Let's go back to this one. Some of the patterns that they come out with actually uh, have species to use. Like they'll say walnut for. Uh, this bottom piece down here on the pattern. They'll say walnut on the pattern. Or they'll give you a number on this part of the pattern and it'll have a corresponding area where it tells you a number five is walnut. I mean, but they're, all of them are just recommendations. They're not um, something you have to live by trust me you can make changes to whatever you want depending on the wood that you have available you may not have a certain species of wood that they recommend so you have to make an alteration or a change so it's just a recommendation it's not nothing to go by now this is a Kathy uh, Wise pattern and she doesn't really make uh, that type of recommendation she just puts like an M for medium colored wood MD for medium dark D for dark that's how her patterns here. We'll look at this and see. Yeah, that's how her patterns are done. So, and even it says, I think this is a B. I don't have my glasses on, but that would be for black. So that's how she does her patterns. And then all of them give recommendations, once again, on the um, grain direction. For instance, on his tail, there is an arrow right here. I don't know if you can see it, but I'm going to trace over it. There is an arrow right there. Let me get my glasses. I'm tired of being blind. I, they, that, where do you think I just got them? They're right here. I just had to put them on. I, there's a pair. I, these are my shop glasses. They don't go anywhere except here in the shop. So, And then on this part of the tail, you can see there's an arrow here. And by the way, that was Paul making a comment about I ought to get a pair of glasses and leave them in the shop. He was a day late and a dollar short. So, and then the, the green direction on this one goes there. Like I said, I'm tressing these arrows so that you can see in case they're too small. That direction goes there. Down here on the bottom, this one's going this way. This one's going this way. This one's going this way. So every one of these pieces have a grain direction. Okay? So that's what the arrows are. And I, 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 every pattern that I've ever seen from uh, Kathy Wise or uh, what's Judy Gale Roberts uh, has those arrows on it showing you the grain direction. So that's a nice thing about buying patterns from those people is because of the fact that uh, they have a lot of they've done a lot of the work for you the grain direction you can make your own patterns I mean there's nothing wrong with it you can make your own patterns that for sure so 
And these areas here in the light color of the scroll right here are depicted here with a W for like white. Well, <laughs> nope, <laughs> the CNC don't. <laughs> but the scroll saw does, so it's a lot smarter. So, so anyway, so that's the patterns. And uh, like I said, these are just uh, recommendations of the color. And you can see on her squirrel, which uh, she used a red color, like of, of type of wood. It's even more pronounced red if you look at the pattern. Uh, I did this in drafts, so it wouldn't be, I wouldn't waste so much ink. But uh, it's really kind of red on the, the original photograph. But... Uh, I don't know that down here in Florida we don't have uh, red squirrels. They're all of a brownish color and with a like dark brown in their tail, almost black looking. Some of them. So anyway, so my interpretation was I didn't want to use a red colored wood for this. So like I said, my friend. Um, Ken Moon had given me some red oak and so this part of his body that is all this color red right through here his arm most of his head the outskirts of his tail is going to be done in this red oak and then the bottom part which is brown right here and then the part that comes up through his tail is going to be done out of this walnut so I milled these uh, this was uh, over two inches thick, two and a quarter, I believe it was. So I milled it down to, uh, I got two nice pieces out of this walnut. So I milled it down to uh, one inch thick. Y'all can see it is one inch thick. And so is the red oak is also one inch thick. So we'll be working with that. Now, just before... And I should have st started this off before, and I didn't do it, so I apologize for that. Uh, yeah, laser beams. Um, I didn't uh, start off with this, and I should have, but you remember the uh, snowman that I did? Here, give me one second. I want to go grab him and bring him here so I can show you. I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. Ow, I hit myself, which hurt. Um, the snowman that I did, uh, I finished him. I knew we wouldn't have enough time to get him done with everything that I had to do after Christmas. And trust me, it was like the first week or so of January before I got back to him to be able to finish him. But I had finished him, and I wanted to just real quick... Uh, I got a real quick video showing you how uh, now this is segmentation here this is cut out of a piece of pine with the exception of the signs they are done with uh, the Baltic birch plywood and uh, his nose and eyes and stuff like that but the basic part of him is cut out of the one piece of but I have a, a real quick video that I wanted to show you and I can talk to you about uh, let me set that up also and we'll go over the video and I'll just show you real quick how I assembled him. So I'm going to put you on the B right back. Again? Yes, I'm putting you on, and y'all should be able to hear me. I just need a second to be able to set this up um, so that y'all can see the video. 
live because every time I tried to set it up today it ran it wouldn't stay still yep they should start yep should start so okay so um, yes I'm using uh, uh, 2p10 and yes I haven't had any problem you can see it stays together so I used and I'm using the now I'm using the thick I'm using the thick um, 2p10 But I got out. I just take a few minutes to press it. Now that's I'm putting it on. This is the same table that I'm on here right now on the live show. But uh, I put a piece of wax paper down because it doesn't really stick to uh, uh, acrylic cyanate or whatever you call it. Two P ten doesn't really stick to the wax paper. It does. It sometimes does, but it's easy to pull off. But it really doesn't stick. <laughs> now this is the red little banner band that goes above or on his hat that's what I'm gluing on now I mean I just wanted to show you this real quick just to show you how quick the project once you get it all cut once you get it all painted and ready it goes together rather fast it doesn't take a long time It was primed with, uh, yes, it was primed actually with uh, Kills uh, primer in, in a can. Kills in a can. Everything was primed. The black was primed. It used to be white and is spray painted over after I primed it with black. <coughs> Everything was primed white. Everything was primed white with Kills. Yeah, it's kill spray. It's kills is a uh, stain killer and also can be used as a wood primer. Yeah, silicone paper. I have a silicone mat also that I'm too dumb to brag out because I forget I have it sometimes that would work. So it won't stick to silicone either. I mean, it does until it gets good and dry and then it peels off. So it's it's like a, a temporary bond. It doesn't stick permanently. But that's really all there is to it. And you just hold it together. And then once I get it all held together, I'll push it together real good to make sure that that glue squeezes in between all the pieces real good and I just leave it alone I walk away and leave it I think I left it for hours several hours before I messed with it if I'm not mistaken yeah I think I left it several hours before I even messed with it and uh, then I came back uh, after I, I mean I'm hitting it fairly hard I don't want to break him but it, you're gonna hang you're not going to be beaten on this thing. It's going to be hung on a wall, so it should. Um, you know, you're going to. It's not going to be. Um, it's going to be hung on a wall. So you're not playing football with it or anything, so it will hold. Now the letters, I uh, I cheated. I used a pen nailer. The signs, I used a pen nailer. The buckle for the hat, uh, I glued it. The eyes were put on with a pen nailer, and the and the mouth, and then the uh, this is a piece of wooden dowel that I just sanded. Here, let me give you a 3D view of it. Uh, no, this has no backer on it. This has no backer. So, but yeah. Um, this the nose was glued. It's a piece of wooden dowel that I just sharpened like a uh, on. A, I took it actually to my 
big three 36 inch belt sander and just stood there and turned the wooden dowel until I made it to where it looked good and then like I said the uh, the eyes the mouth on the, all the letters and the signs are all made of Baltic birch plywood and yeah I think I mean I I think he turned out really well I think he looked sharp so it's three quarter inch thick material except with the exception of all the ball quarter inch Baltic birch plywood so and then I guess uh, um, Paul you know, asked me if um, it had a backer on it and then that's the reason I turned it over a minute ago and I forgot to tell y'all no it does not have no backer it's so and I, that was how I put it together now I had the, all the video of me putting all the letters on and pin nailing them and everything down I was like eh, I just want to show you how I you know glued it all together and yeah, I, I've used fast cap on a lot of this stuff I have another project I'll have to show you a, a segmentation project I did and uh, it turned out it's called under the sea and uh, I used uh, 2p10 for that too so I haven't had a problem with the 2p10 holding on painted surfaces I have not had a problem now I use once again I use thick I do not use thin I want it to kind of fill in they actually have a 2p10 makes a gel uh, the gel that I had was an older bottle and it was um, hardened up so I couldn't use the gel now, but I usually use thick anyway this time I wanted to use the gel and lo and behold the gel was already dried up I used it a lot so anyway that's what I wanted to show you all about the uh, snowman do we have any questions out there so I'm gonna probably have to put my glasses on to do this so no on the snowman it can't be in Tarja there's nothing on there in Tarja that's all one piece of pine except for the signs and they're out of Baltic birch plywood so I mean and they're not cut they're not cut and fitted together just signs that I made and stuck on there so all right so we got my little squirrel out here I got this is not see where I stuck myself caught myself coming when I went got up a minute ago uh, so we're not going to use this one I'm going to make this apply this down on the table and use this to lay my pieces on uh, put them together as the pattern so we're not going to use that one so we're going to start off with one of these All right, so uh, all right, y'all. If if I hate to ask y'all this, but if Paul, if you and Al could like be quiet because you're distracting me big time, uh, you're making me lose my concentration. So, um, so we're gonna start cutting this out. I'm gonna work on. Let's go ahead and work on here. I need my picture of my little squirrel. Let's work on the red parts. Of the body, so there'd be this piece, this piece, this piece, this piece, this piece, all these little, all these parts. So now I can get all, should be able to get all these. Well, no, I won't. Uh, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So we know this back side of this tail. Here, let me put him over here so I can have him in two places. And then I want to drop this camera down on him like that there we go so we know the back side of this tail is here so I'm gonna to need to cut it out and you'll start seeing why you need all these patterns Oop, got a little close on that line there not paying attention Okay, 
So that's the back side of his tail right there. You don't follow uh, Paul's question about not following the lines and I'll show you because each one of these are individual pieces that you have to cut out of different species of wood. Uh, so you can't just follow the line. You need to see the line to be able to cut the pattern out. So this is this is going to go on this red wood and you can see the grain direction pointing me so it'll be glued like right here. That's another thing. You need to have enough of it so you can see the pattern direction. So that'll be glued like right there. Now the next part is going to be this. I'm going to do this big area here on the squirrel. So we're just going to cut that out like this. Wow, why am I getting so close to the edges on these things? I know why, because I'm so used to cutting. Alright, I'm going to put, yes, you could. You could. Alright, let's see if there's, I can get another piece. Uh, yes. Alright, so I can't get this arm out of this because I've already cut into the arm. Uh, the next piece is this maple. The next piece is this medium part uh, here that I'm going to cut out. Where is my pen? This part right here. Okay, that's that part right there. Now I'm just going to be cutting out this part in here. That's all that matters to me. I'll lay him over there. Can get another piece out of here? Yes, I should be able to get this back piece up here, which is the back side of his ear, out of this piece. And then there's that little piece there. <coughs> I'll show you when I'm, uh, excuse me for coughing in your ears. Uh, actually, I can get one more little piece out of this. If you look up here, it's hard to see, but on his nose, this is actually uh, two pieces in his nose. So I will be cutting that little piece out. Man, that's a little piece. That's the piece. So, there's that piece. I think that piece is pretty well scrap. Okay. So I have actually successfully, I'm going to mark this pattern over here, or him. I have successfully cut this. I have successfully cut this. Uh, I have successfully cut this piece, this piece, and this piece out of the pattern. Okay, so now I get me a second pattern out. 
I probably could have used, no, I think I cut into the brown. That's okay. It's only paper and ink. It's not expensive. So let's go for this piece here next. No, I wanted to show you how to do it. Al said I should have had these pieces pre-cut. I beg to differ with you. I wanted to show because people don't understand that this is what it takes and what you have to go through if you've never done it before for uh, to make actually make an intarsia pattern or an intarsia piece. Uh, so we successfully got that piece. I can't get his arm out of this because I cut part of the arm down there but I can get a couple of these pieces I think I successfully now this is two pieces but I can I'm pretty sure I can successfully since the grain direction in both this piece or this here since the grain direction in this piece and this piece both go in the same direction I can use this one piece right here like that and just cut down the center of them to separate them because the grain now if the grain directions were going into different directions I would have to cut this piece out and this piece out separate on the pattern if you understand that but since they're both going in the same direction, I can cut it out as one piece on the pattern. And then when I cut them, I just separate them with a scroll saw. Now this is going to be done out of um, the walnut. Okay, and then I should, six, so that piece there is done. And this piece here is done. Okay, so um, I should successfully be able to get this. This is going to be out of maple here, and this little piece right here in the front. So I'm going to successfully get this piece out. Okay, now the maple pieces I'm going, I got a little table over here off to the side. I'm going to put them over there. So we now have this piece here successfully cut out of the pattern. Yes, you cut all the patterns, then you glue them to the wood, and then you cut. Yes, just pay attention and be around for the next two or three twitches and you'll see. Yeah. Okay, so his uh, nose I can get out of this. So I'm going to go ahead and get the. Actually, I can get more than his nose. I can get this uh, piece here on the end of his. hand which is the acorn I can get that piece out of there I'm going to put it over there in a different little pile so I've got now I've got the acorn okay so uh, I'm going to go ahead and go for the upper part of his head in this which is this piece here real quick yep which is this piece here that I want okay 
this is the piece that I've cut out and as reference is it's this piece here above his eye all this piece starts right here and goes this direction all right here so that's the next piece I've cut out and that's going to be out of the red oak so that goes over there now yeah I got should have plenty of red oak over there now let's see if there's anything else I can get out of this pattern uh, yes I can get one of these two pieces of um, right here of the white wood out of this pattern to me I think this of course the sanding is too but alright I can get this piece out here which is this piece over here okay so I got him out and then pretty much this is scrap okay pull me another pattern out now which piece I want to go I'm gonna go for his arm in this one which is this piece here and get that out of the way for the red oak So now we have successfully cut this piece out. Okay, and that goes over there. Now let's see. Can I get, yep, I can get, um, I can't use any of these down here, but I can get should be able to get his the piece for the ear right here and then the outer piece let's go with I'm gonna go with the outer piece of the ear Now this is the outer piece of the ear, which is this right here in the red that I want. So I'll be cutting for this one, this here, and I'll cut a hole in it on this part here, if you can see that. The W will be cut out as a hole, and I'm just going to cut out the red. And then I can get one more piece out of this, and that is for the ebony, for the eyeball. And this piece is going to go over here on my little stand. And so I've got this piece here out of the way and I've got this piece here around this ear out of the way so that's pretty well all I can get nope I can get another piece I haven't cut this out yet I'm missing this piece down here so this piece of his foot down here this is actually another piece separate over here which is this is here I can get this out of this piece. Which is that is this part, which is this part of his foot.
Yes, if you were doing a big pattern, it probably would, yes. I would say most definitely. Just go through and mark your pieces as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, you know, all the way up. And then that would help you a bunch. Because what you're going to do now as we get later on, which I'll show you, as I'll get later on in this, I'm going to have this set up on a table. Oops, sorry, I hit the cameras. I'm going to have this pattern set up on a table and probably covered with a clear paper or uh, plexiglass or something. Anyway, so this is going to be laid down. So as I cut the pieces out of my wood, once I get these all arranged, they're not arranged, I've got to get them all arranged on the wood. Once I get these pieces all arranged on the wood, see how this has got the arrow? This arrow is going down, so I want that to go that way. This arrow is going down. That arrow is going down. This arrow is going down. So as I start cutting each of these, oops, I'm already missing my little part of his nose here. This thing's so small I can't even hardly pick it up. As I start cutting my pieces, I'm going to take these pieces out and I'm going to walk over and I'm going to set it in position onto this one. So let's say this is my piece of wood and I've cut it and I'll bring it over and I'll set it in this position. So each piece as I cut it out, I'll take it over to the master and set it on top in that position. I don't understand by how much room you leave for sanding. I don't understand what that means. Um, you're just gonna have to watch. <laughs> yeah, I don't understand. You only you don't you don't sand the whole piece all the way down to the bottom of the one inch. You're only gonna shape the f upper part of it, so to speak. So there's still gonna be some flat left on the pieces down at the bottom when you glue them together. Yeah, yeah camphor camphor what I call it camphor the edges champer camper whatever you want to call it so yeah you're so there, it's a one inch thick piece so therefore you would only go down I mean you might want to go down all the way and just leave a quarter of the bottom flat so it's the I cut it to the line yes I want them to fit together I cut it to the line. I don't leave uh, any uh, room for sanding. The, the sanding done, uh, once again, you need to watch. <laughs> you need to watch. That will be explained. Yeah, <laughs> or, or sneeze. Yeah, or sneeze. Yeah, this look at look at this little piece right here. I mean, and his eyeball, which is over there, is really small. This is like the one of the smallest pieces. This is like his nostril. So, okay, let's figure out which pieces I don't have as of yet. I don't have these two pieces of white here and here. I don't have the white in his ear as of yet and I don't have the white surrounding his eyes. I should be able to get those pieces out of this. Now on this, if you'll look real closely on his eye, this is uh, these one, two, three pieces here above his eye and even the uh, black part of his eye do not have any arrows on them so it doesn't they're so small you really can't tell the grain direction so I can actually uh, cut this whole thing out here which is what I'm going to do and glue it down and just cut the pieces out separately uh, naturally I won't need the black piece in the center because it doesn't matter what grain direction those are in now on these pieces it does matter what the grain direction goes in and I need this piece here and this piece here and then on the white I need this piece here so we'll go up here and uh, go after his ear first I'm 
Okay, there is his ear. And that's this part here. So I've successfully cut that out. I'll put this over here on the table with a stack of W's. And then we're going to cut his eye out. And I should There's the pieces for his eye. And remember, I already cut the black out. So I got that piece now, and I got that piece. Actually, there's three pieces. There's a little piece right here. That's going to go over on this table over here with all the W's. And just so I can show you what I'm talking about. These are all the white or light pieces that I have as of so far. So I am going to glue them. I just okay. All I'm doing at this moment is cutting the pieces out. After I get everything cut out, then I glue the pattern to the wood. That's coming up. You just have to gonna watch and wait to see. They're not gonna float around in midair. They're gonna be actually glued to the wood. Yeah. Now we're going after these pieces of the white. Most of your questions well, that you're all are asking are great questions. It's just they're going to be answered as we move along. Uh, well, and Tarja is one of those things that you don't want to be impatient with because you'll mess up the piece. Okay, with this piece I successfully got, oh, I don't need this piece here. Let me cut through it so I don't get confused. And I don't need this on this. Okay. So in this piece here, I successfully got this piece, this piece. And that's the white, which goes over there. Uh... The only other piece that I need, I think that's it. I think I successfully cut it all out. Uh, did I ever cut? Nope. I got one more piece I got to cut out. I need the piece here. I've got that piece, that piece, that piece, which is his head, that piece for his ear, all around his eye. I have that, his nostril, that, his hand, Okay, this picture is deceiving. So uh, that's this is the piece I need next, and I should be able to get it out of this one right here. And that is this piece here. Uh, am I going to be able to do it? Nope. I can't get it out of this. I'm going to have to use my last pattern. I cut into that. So I made perfect. I made perfect the amount of paper for pattern.
Now this is showing something that the picture doesn't show, which are like another little set of fingers outside the original set of fingers. So I'm going to cut them off. and put them over there with a the red oak pile just to see. Okay, so now I have this piece here that comes down. So I got this piece, this piece, this piece, this white piece, this 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 piece. I think I got everything. And if you miss something, you can always come back or you can produce another pattern in there once you start putting it together because once you start assembling it on this right here you'll know real quick like if you messed up okay these two pieces here are my walnut pieces I'm gonna set them over here to the side and then these pieces here are my red oak pieces. And now it's time for us to glue them. Now I'm not going, what time are we running here? I'm hoping we're running towards, yeah, we're running. Good. I was hoping that would take up some time. Because, um, okay. What I've got to do is, and I don't think I brought anything in here. I didn't know how far we were going to get going on this. Is I need something to lay down to spray on. And I didn't think we'd get this far. So, uh, let me put you on a hold and let me grab something real quick to lay down on here so I can show you what I'm talking about. Okay, I'm back. Let me move. I haven't got anything cut. How am I supposed to sand? <laughs> uh, Marty, I haven't cut anything as of yet. You have to cut stuff before you can sand. So, you're uh, a little premature on the sanding part. <laughs> I'll show you the Guinevere and you'll see me sand with it, but uh, I'm not going to be able to sand a whole lot in front of y'all uh, unless I move this out to the other part of the shop because I'm not cutting that Guinevere loose and sanding all that stuff in here. Uh, there's going to be a lot of dust slinging, so usually what I like to do is either be out there or out. Actually, sometimes I'll sit outside and, and a chair and and sand because you got I mean I'm gonna have a mask on but just so that the open air can take it away so but yeah the Guinevere is not until we cut after we cut stuff I have a whole lot of cutting to going on before I can get to the Guinevere so Marty you're um, yeah some of y'all seen sanding before others haven't apparently <laughs> 
<laughs> no, I'll get, I'll do, I'll show you all the Guinevere and show how it works and everything. Plus, you can use on these small pieces that Guinevere is actually even too big for some of them. I'll, I'll end up using my Dremel uh, with the uh, their little sanding drums on the Dremel, or I'll end up using. Give me Uno. Yeah. Let me see if I can get this thing. Well, I can't get it down from there. Everybody's always wanting to get ahead of everything. Okay, I'll use my Dremel, or I'll use this, and put the sanding discs on it. This is a like an air grinder. It plugs into the compressor, and uh, you turn it off and on with this black, and you can use it, or put a bit in it also, but it will do the same thing. So I'll either use this, or my Dremel and the uh, Guinevere. So that's what you'll see me sanding with when it comes time. When it comes to that point. So uh, I've had that thing for years and years and years. And why I like it is, is because it's it runs off of air so it doesn't get hot in your hands like after you're running the Dremel for a while starts getting a little warm in your hands and plus the Dremel's kind of bulky in size that's real small no nope. actually the uh, air comes out the back side of it on that big long tube off of it so it comes out away from it so nope it doesn't okay so here we've got Katie's leaving on us why are you leaving me Katie Here we've got this piece here on the board. Now we're going to start uh, aligning the grains of these, like I started. We've got the grain going that way. We've got the grain going that way. That isn't even a piece. We need the grain. We need that one going that way. This one can go this way. Hmm. I was saying now that he's seeing this, now he's kind of understanding. I don't kind of like this dark area over here. I'm going to try to get away from it. I don't actually need this piece there. Uh, I'm going to keep these pieces for the hands. They can go up in there. And that piece can go there. Actually, I have plenty of room for this piece. To go here now if you will look all of my arrows are pointing down the green on this piece of wood is running up and down this way 
so that all the arrows are pointing down. Except this one, this one's off a little bit. Wish I can straighten that. This one has no arrows. This one needs to go around a little bit more. That one looks good. That one looks good. That one looks good. Okay. Now we can glue them. So you should be able to see over here. I'm going to be using 3M uh, General 45. That I'm going to be using. So I'm not going to cut loose with this stuff tonight due to the fact that I don't have any ventilation in here. But I will spray a few pieces to show you what we'll do. So you shake this up real good. Yep, 3M General Purpose 45. This is the best stuff for the scrolls all patterns. Yes, it is. All right. Um, it's got a little red dot. Make sure your spray thing is pointing toward the red dot. Here, so. Let's take the big piece up here up top because it's easy to work with. Now let's turn it over right here. Kind of put my little fingy on it. Whoa! That thing's shooting off. Shoot a little on it. Make sure my grain direction is back where I want it. I'm going to put it down on the piece, and yes, I picked up this piece. Yeah, I was talking about a pair of tweezers or hemostats or something, yeah. Let's go with this one. Well, this stuff's already smelling up the place. Yes, sir. I might be able to might get a buzz off this stuff before it's over with. Now, I'm only taking off this piece here and this piece here, so there's a plenty of space between these two to cut these cut out in case you were going like, wow, he's putting those awful close. And then we'll glue this piece here. All right. So there you get the idea. So I'll glue, end up gluing all these pieces on here. And yes, I'm getting it on my fingers, so therefore I'm going to end up having to get some mineral spirits to get it off my hand. This stuff does not wash off the water. Uh, I want to go with this big piece here. Let's 
this is the last piece my fingers are getting very very sticky and I'm afraid I'm gonna end up messing up the pattern yeah they're getting tacky getting that stuff on my fingers so they're getting very tacky and I don't want to mess up the pattern have to recut anything so the other pieces just can wait for later but yeah 3 and 45 general purpose Al did you try going online to um, go online to uh, uh, I'm yeah I'm trying to think of the name uh, uh, I found it at Ace Hardware online uh, I don't know about uh, Lowe's but I do know that uh, Ace Hardware online is where I found it they were cheaper than anybody else because the stores around me quit carrying it Walmart used to carry it, and uh, they quit carrying it. Went to that Loctite crap, and that stuff ain't worth a flip. But uh, so I uh, went online. Somebody had told me that they thought Ace carried it, and sh but the Ace hardware that I have here locally doesn't have it. But they said it's online, and I went on, and I was able to get like three cans. They sell it in packs of three, and it was cheaper, almost a dollar and fifty a can cheaper than anywhere else. So I saved like three four dollars and fifty cents and I ordered three cans so yeah <laughs> all right so that's got a good start tonight on the uh, doing this and then I got these two or three pieces left to glue on to this piece and then I move on to the walnut and glue it down and then I've got to cut a piece of maple uh, which is the white color next and glue it so I'm not going to uh, this is the last of the gluing so I hope you understood that if you have any questions but this is the last of gluing because I'll glue the, uh, the maple and the walnut up to be ready to start cutting on the next show so once I start cutting on the next show, we'll get as much cut out as we can. And then after that, uh, probably going to go four shows. Because after that, we'll do the sanding and the um, fitting the pieces together. And then we glue it up. So it'd be a cool little series. So... All right, so that's all for tonight. I appreciate all y'all being out there. Holy crap, there's a bunch of people out there. We had 17. I think there's 13 now. Wow, great, fantastic. Uh, am I going to show the sander tonight? No, it's still in the box. It's still in the box. I haven't taken it out of the. I haven't, they're wanting to know if I'm going to show the sander tonight, and I'm like, no, I haven't even taken it out of the box. I mean, I took it out of the main big box to post the pictures online, but it's still in its individual boxes. I haven't even opened up the boxes. The sander, the Guinevere sander, is what Al, Al and Paul, Paul and Al's got to have in a fit, or Al especially is having a fit in my ear, wanting to know why aren't you showing the sander? I ain't showing it tonight. You're going to have to come back and watch every show until you see the sander. No, not next Wednesday. We're going to be cutting next Wednesday. Yep, we'll be cutting out next Wednesday. <laughs> I'll show you the box. I'll go over there and grab one of the boxes and show it to you. You want me to open up one? Do y'all want me to open up one of the dad burn boxes here tonight? Okay, so what I'll do then. All right, here. But what I'll do is, hold on. I got to move stuff around. So if y'all want to just give me a second. Don't get your panties all in a wad. Give me one second. I got to get this pad off of here because I got it all sticky with the glue throw that down on the floor over there okay let me put you on hold for a minute
Okay, I'm back. Uh, took me an extra second or two, and I still didn't get it all off. I had to go get some mental spirits. Get that stuff off my fingers. I still missed some, but oh well. Okay, so let me back this camera up some. And so this is part here is the flexible shaft that goes in to the motor. So uh, let me see. I need a knife. I don't have a knife. <laughs> Scroll saw blade won't cut it. Right. So we're so this is the flexible shaft. And then this piece here goes into the motor. So, it is, it's a drill, uh, I made the comment, this almost looks like a drill chuck. This is exactly what it is. It's just a drill chuck shoved on a shaft. What I like about that part is, and the motor has those same chucks, they're actually bigger, but the motor has these same chucks on the uh, shafts so that you can exchange, you can put different types of uh, sanding things on there. So that makes it fantastic. You're not just, they're not giving you like a specific, let's say a, a three millimeter shaft on their sanding disc things and then that's the only thing that'll fit. Anything that'll fit in that chuck will work, which is great. Yes, it tightens down with a key. I have a key. It has a key just like a regular drill. Here, let me pull this off. It's got grease on it this reason. See, it's a it's got the keyholes right there. But that's what I like about this part of it is the fact that um, uh, you can interchange it with it, some other stuff. And then these are... these sanding pieces. Now these are actually air bladders in them and they actually fill up through the end of the tip and this is your little air pump so that you can make them as stiff or as spongy as you want. And this just, um, I don't know how exactly, yes these, these here, this and this right here, as you can see, is squishy. I can fill it with air, and this is the air pump. This hooks up to this, like so. And then you can add air to this and make them um, really tight. And then this is your discs that go on this. And then this is your, little, I call them cups. They look like sanding cups that go on this part. So, Al's being really, really funny and I'm going to boot him. So anyway, but that's this part. And then you have the, which is over there in the box, which I'm not going to pull out tonight, um, the actual um, 
motor, which is the motor, which the motor part is this part right here, which like I said, you can see this is a drill chuck on the end and this is a drill chuck on the end. So you, you can accept different sizes of, um, you can put you can put a drill bit in the darn thing. I mean, I don't know why you want to put a drill bit in there, but you can put pretty much anything. So any type of a, a sanding adapter that you could find that has, you know, like a shaft on it. Uh, many drum sanders would work. Larger drum sanders, flat sanders. Uh, these sanders that I like. I do not know what RPM the motor runs. I haven't looked it up. I, I'm sure it's got it on there, but I haven't looked it up as of yet. We'll find that out. It will when you when you come back. We'll find out when we uh, fire it off. We'll find it. It's not. I do know that it's not adjustable. It's off on. Yes, the sandpaper that fits these particular things you uh, is a special sandpaper. I think, uh, I don't quote me on this, but I think Klingspore carries this stuff. The sandpaper for these. So I think Klingspore carries the sandpaper for these. I'm going to have to check on that. So don't quote me. You know, don't quote me on that. Uh, I'm not 100% sure, but I'll, I'll check into that. But like I said, you could put this sanding, you could put any of these in those drill chucks so you could have a flat sanding disc on it that's what I like about the motor that's what I was really interested in and in getting this is because of the fact uh, I had seen one my uh, the president of our woodworking club George Hatch uh, has one of these and I've seen it and I saw it and I was like I like the idea of that because they didn't put a specific size on there so that you can put any other type of sanding thing on there that you want which really makes it nice and I used his and I was like oh I like this so we're gonna check it out before it's all all said and done we're gonna check it out so all right guys well that definitely is it for tonight but uh, thank you cleans for and uh, this will be put to good use making we're gonna use it some on this uh, squirrel uh, so I definitely use it some on the squirrel so anyway thank you all for being out there 